why are there 43 quintillion, 252 quadrillion? I'm not gonna say the whole thing, am I? Why are there over 43 quintillion possible positions on the Rubik's cube? Instead of thinking about combinations of turns we can do on the cube, we have to think about this cube as what it really is. The Rubik's Cube's six centerpieces are all connected by a core, which means they cannot move relative to each other. So we can consider these as fixed in place and everything else moves around it. To count how many possible positions there are on a cube, it helps to just think about it as putting pieces in one by one. There are 12 edge pieces and eight corner pieces. Now the difference between these is an edge piece has two colors and a corner piece has three colors. Edge pieces can go between two center pieces such as this, and a corner piece would go between three center pieces such as this. Since corner and edge pieces belong in completely different spots, they can't interfere with each other, so for now we'll consider them as completely separate. Let's see what happens when I assemble just with edges first. So for the very first edge, I can put this in any position between two centers. That means that right now I have 12 possible choices, and I can just pick one of those spots. Now notice that I could have put it in here with green on the side, or I could have put it in with orange on the side. This is something I'll talk about later. So we go on to the next edge, and now we look at how many positions I I have. Well, I can't put it in the same spot as the previous one, so at this point I can choose between 11 possibilities and I will just put it right here. For my next edge, I have 10 possible places I can put it because 2 out of the 12 are already taken. These were the number of options I had at any point, and when you put them all together, what you do is you multiply all of them. If you've learned probability in school before, it may seem obvious why you should multiply these together, but to visualize why you would want to multiply, think about it as a branching path through time. From the start, I had 12 possible choices, and down each of those paths, I had 11 choices I could make after that. So just for the first two pieces, the total number of paths I could have gone down were 12 times 11. It's too much work to draw the rest of this, but you get the idea. The total number of branches will be gigantic. And we can simplify this all down to 12 factorial, which just means multiply 12 with every whole number smaller than it. For the corner pieces, it's the exact same idea. I have eight places that I can put the first corner piece in, so I'll just pick one of those spots. And for the next corner piece, one spot is taken, so I only have seven spots remaining I can put it in. And again, for the last corner piece, I only have one spot it can go into. Okay, I didn't think this through. You're not supposed to put a cube back together like this. For the corner pieces, we have eight times seven times six all the way down to one, and this is eight factorial. When you multiply all this together, you get over 19 trillion different ways that you can put the pieces in the cube. But I haven't talked about what if we flipped these pieces in different ways. This edge, for example, could be in the same spot but flipped in the other way. So you can think about it this way. When I put the first edge in its spot, I had 12 choices of where to put it, but at each of those 12 spots, I can choose to have it flipped one way or the other way, which is another two options. So there are actually twice as many options of what to do with the first edge, and then twice as many for the next and the next and so on. So we multiply all those together, or you can also say that this is two to the power of 12. And then for corners, this, for example, yellow on top, or on the right, or on the left. So with each corner, I multiply by three. There are eight corners. So with the same reasoning as edges, we have three to the power of eight. That's about it for how pieces can be arranged on the cube. And if we multiply all these together, we get 519 quintillion. This is the correct answer for what I was calculating, which is how many ways can you put the Rubik's Cube back together? So this is just the cube reassembled, and let's see what happens if I try to solve it. Okay, twisted corner and flipped edge. All right, and this is not a possible PLL case. So just to show you what I mean, here are two swapped edges and that's not supposed to be possible. In that solve, I ran into three things that were impossible to solve just by turning the cube normally. First thing is it's impossible to have one corner twisted and no other corners twisted. The same thing applies for edges, you cannot just have one edge flipped. And the last thing is you cannot just have two pieces swapped. So going back to the numbers, let's change this to reflect what I just talked about. In terms of how I put the corners in, like how they're twisted, I can put the first seven corners in however I like, but the last one depends on how the first seven are twisted. So 
remember the numbers here are just for assembling the cube any way I want. But if I want to assemble the cube to be solvable, then the last three doesn't belong there and it should be a one because for the last corner, I only have one option of how I put it in. If I put it in wrong, then the cube is not solvable. And the same idea applies to edges. The last one has to be flipped just the right way so that I don't end up with one flipped edge at the end. So again, I only have one option here. And the last change we make here is since I put in all the edges followed by all the corners, I can actually put the edges wherever I like. Then I can put the corners wherever I like down to the last two. For the last two corners, if I put them in the wrong positions, then I end up with an extra swap on the cube, which is not solvable. But if I put them in the right way, then it's fine. So for the last two corners, there's only one option that actually keeps the cube solvable. So instead of having two, there should only be one. If you work this out again, you get the right answer, which is 43 quintillion. If you're a speed cuber, you should already know that you can't have single corner twist, you can't have a single edge flip, and you cannot just swap two pieces. But maybe you don't know why, and if you're not a speed cuber, you probably never heard of this before, so you're also wondering why that's the case. The reason has to do with what one individual turn can do to the pieces. Now for why we have those very specific rules about twisting one or flipping one or swapping two pieces, then you can watch this video where I go in depth into the reason. So that's it for three by three, but I have a challenge for you guys. How many positions are there on a two by two? Now you might think this is easy, just grab the part on my three by three calculation that is just for corners and you're done. But nope, that's not the right answer and it's trickier than that. So see if you can get the number and explain to me in the comments why that is. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.